I get this text with the stem in my phone. I'll never forget the moment I like click play and it just came out so clean, completely like solo. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh my, my God. God. I'm so happy to see you. I'm so happy to see you. You know, when we're in the studio, you often come up because I'm always so just so curious what you would think about songs. There's like a few people that I think about. I'm like, what would Max Martin say? Mm -hmm. Wow. What would Taylor Swift say? What would Zayn Lowe say? Ooh, another one. <laughs> I love that, man. I love that. I mean, the fact that I even come up in any in any kind of way at all during a creative process is a huge honor to me. And I'm such a fan of the way that you've grown and, and transformed and stay true to how you feel in the moment. And man, you, you feel good right now. I really do. <laughs> I really, really do. You know, especially like this year, um, you know, like uh, some of this album was written almost as a fantasy about what I wanted to happen because I was in this COVID lockdown and I was just dreaming about like connecting with people and traveling and going to shows and music, bring people together. And I think like it really solidified how important those things were to me. And then once the lockdowns lifted, living it felt even better than I you know, could have ever imagined. Because and... music is a beautiful manifestation tool. Yeah. Yeah. We, to speak something into existence totally. is to, and to feel it is to make music. Wow. I'm just going to write a song about finding a husband and <laughs> <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> Dope. Uh, do you think, did you feel like you found the one that, 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 that broke your heart on this album? Did it feel like it was like a real keeper that moment in time? N no, honestly. But that was okay as well because I think it just made me so much more comfortable with being by myself and so much more comfortable with, um, being with my friends and also just with like, with people that are coming and going through your life, you know, like I, I just saw such like beauty in all of those moments. And I was like, okay, you know, like love exists in many, in many, many forms and you can feel it in, in many different ways, you know, with someone you just met five minutes ago. You've really captured that on the album. It's all experience. Yeah. It's all experience. And it, and it feels like such an experienced album. Often people write songs about parties or ideas or relationships or, or experiences and it's part, it's part personal, it's part absorbed and, and vicarious. I feel like this whole album is a genuine reflection of the life that you're living right now. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I really like, um, it meant a lot to me. All of these ideas, you know, like, like partying as a sort of like almost religious, like ex a spiritual experience. Um, I just felt so grateful, you know, to be able to be that hot and sweaty feeling on the dance floor that like Rush really captures, I think is, um, I knew that I needed that moment on the album and I knew that it had to feel genuine and the video couldn't just be like a party video that we shot in LA or whatever, you know, with like a bunch of extras or whatever. We went to Berlin and we just like filmed it's you like, and your crew. The, the real deal. You know? <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and so I think that I realized like the kind of rawness and vulnerability in those moments, um, is so beautiful to me. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to like celebrate it. What's the come down like? Fine, because I don't really do drugs. <laughs> yeah, I um, I'm too anxious. I've like always been too. I get really nervous to take like Zequil. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, so yeah, um, yeah. and that was another thing as well. Is I think like growing up, I I didn't really have a party phase when I was like you know eighteen, nineteen, whatever. Um, and then so to start kind of partying at the age of twenty five, twenty six for the first time properly in my life. I think part of it was I assumed that wasn't for me because I didn't do drugs and because I wasn't like, you know, I don't know, that just wasn't my my vibe for myself. I love it when other people do it because it makes it so much more fun. But um, but for me personally, I'm just like too nervous or whatever. And then realizing, I think, how much for me, the that, that euphoria of closing my eyes and like listening to the music it's and the freedom. heat, that is what is like the ultimate thing for me. And so as soon as I kind of accepted that, that like... I, I can have as good a time as anyone else, I think. Um, and that's okay. You know, like, um, allowing myself to be like, oh no, I really love to party. What's really cool about it too, is the first time that we ever met, understandably so, you were making that really important transition from attention into, into foundation. You were like, okay, I, whatever I've got, people like it. How do I build something off of that and make it substantial and make yeah. it meaningful for you? Yeah. And I could tell over time you were sort of getting more and more comfortable with that. Most artists get to a point of success and then they the, and then the partying is like, oh, I can't be out partying. Like, mm. I got to protect this thing. But you seem so free right now and comfortable 
that, that I guess the question is like, did going out there and immersing yourself in an environment that wasn't judgmental, realizing that you're going to be okay, whether anyone knows who you are or not, it's about the experience everyone's having as individuals in a community, did it help you become more comfortable with the whole picture? I think so. You know, I also, I attribute a lot of it to Melbourne, really, because like, I don't really party in LA. Um, there's no parties in LA. There's no parties in LA. Um, <laughs> it's the party town with no parties. Yeah. You know, I think for me, having a place where I can go and truly let loose, you know what I mean? And like, just like actually relax and feel like I understand people and I feel understood. It, that that also changed the game. I think getting to spend more time in Australia. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I was really happy when you know that you went home and, and had that moment. And because we spoke about it last time, we had a deep conversation or a decent conversation. You were you, it was all remote. And um, I remember you sort of like talking about how you know you you, you sort of snuck through like you had to get back there before mm -hmm. everything shut down. And mm -hmm. I guess with some hindsight now that it's home, but you're also back out. We're all we're all outside. Um, you know, how else did that transform you as a person? Because most people leave home, they don't go back till much, much later. Like the yeah. journey, the chase carries on for many years, right? You kind of yeah. figured a way to go back. Yeah, I think I sort of like freed myself because I I realized how little I need. You know, like I think, I think just um, music is something that I will make for the rest of my life. But now, especially more than ever with like the commercial like success of rush for example like um you know it's like probably the um like the biggest song of my career so far numbers wise right and i feel no different because i've been so proud i'm equally as proud of my 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 as i am of rush and so it's like for me i'm getting to do the part that i love and that's that's what's important to me and then everything else is like cool sick that's awesome and i'm so excited but like it doesn't actually change the way that I feel about myself or what I do or anything like that. And so once you realize that, no one can really dangle that stuff that they normally dangle in front of you, in front of you where it's like, um, oh, but you really should be here because you might miss out on opportunities or whatever. Yeah, it's like, yeah, nah, I'm yeah, actually yeah, I'm good. good. Like I'm, I'm all right. So I think sort of like that has kind of given me the confidence a little bit to, to know that I can tap out when I want to. Reprioritization and a sense of self-awareness, yeah. what's motivating you versus motivating the identity. Totally. Totally. There's a big difference, right? I mean, it's pop stardom, fashion, entertainment, joy, fun. It's all wrapped up into an identity, but it doesn't work unless you're able to tap back into the thing that really feeds your soul. When I think about it, the album and these songs and all of these moments out of the entire album, not a single song is about like going to a fashion show <laughs> or like, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That stuff is so cool, but, but really... I built myself up as a person because I had time in Australia. Like that, that's really when I felt like I was kind of growing. And so, um, yeah, I just kind of, I feel like I sort of just know what I want. What's an artist's life in Australia like? Because and I, let me, let me, let me qualify what artist's life. The first half of that question is for people who are listening and don't understand what I mean. Um, an artist's life is something that moves as and when you need to. And ultimately you create from a place of purpose and it's a full-time life because you're always absorbing and always translating and always figuring out where the magic is and how you can tap into it. Mm -hmm. But it's not a nine to five job. You don't, you yeah. don't have to get up. You have to go do anything if you don't want to. Ultimately you can build a world for yourself where you are kind of a student of life. You know, you're figuring things out and just trying to turn it into music. So I know that's hard life in LA because mm -hmm. people try to turn it into a nine to five job. Mm -hmm. But I'd imagine in somewhere like Melbourne, it's a pretty amazing idyllic kind of place to tap in and tap out. It really is. You know, I, I mean, like I worked so much with Styles Fuego on this album, who's based out of Melbourne and I fucking love him so much. Um, and so, yeah, for me, you know, it's like my friends all go to work during the week, nine to five. And, and um, so I have a lot of time to kind of either ride my bike around Melbourne, go to the pool, like, you know, just like go for breakfast. And then I ride my bike to South Melbourne to the studio and, and we make stuff. And, um, and I feel totally like at peace and fulfilled in those moments. Awesome so, choice. It's so really good. good. It's so yeah. good. I love it. Um, this song that is, uh, you know, the, the, the all important follow up to Rush is like, uh, you liked Rush? All right, cool. Um, 
is such a crusher. Thank Look, you. it's it's one thing to go into, you know, the legacy of music and pick something that made you feel something when you were a kid and wonder if you can add something to it. It's another thing to actually succeed. And the Bag Raiders, I mean, that lick hasn't been heard by anywhere by anyone else except Bag Raiders. Yeah. It's like you're the first person to get your hands on it. And they made me aware of that. No <laughs> shit. They were like, by the way, we've had hundreds of requests and we've never said yes, so don't fuck this up. <laughs> and I was like, I promise you, I'm going to make a video. It's going to be sick. Like, I'm, I really believe in this. And, and I also, I think it's tacky when people um, sample something like out of term. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and I really, really, really didn't want to do that. And I wouldn't be doing this if I felt like that's what I was doing. You know, it was, it was not, it was not, um, it was something that came in the studio naturally. I started singing the the sample, laughing because I was like, "There's no way that they're ever <laughs> yeah, going to let yeah, me do yeah, this." Yeah, yeah. But um, you got the worst demo artist in the world now. Totally, it's exactly. Internal. And I was like, "There's no, now we kind of have no choice because I've been living with the demo. It was one of the first songs that we wrote for the album, and um, it just stuck around. It was like always on. And the did track you list. lay down the riff vocally over it to give yourself no? Like a so sense? while we were in the studio, yeah, I texted my A and R from Australia. And obviously, because we're all Australians, it was like within 20 minutes he had reached them. And I get this text with the stem in my phone. I'll never forget the moment. I like what? play and it just came out so clean, completely like solo. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh my, my God. God. And we put it in and it worked. And I was just like, fucking hell. It must be emotional. It was. It really, really was. Especially like there's this sort of reprise when the synth comes back at the yeah, end yeah. in the video yeah. when I'm like, you know, being pulled up the building. It's amazing. And there's this new like drum pattern. And to me, it, it was perfect. It was the, like the euphoric moment that, of that total, like freedom of realizing that you're completely like fine on your own. And that also this is not a moment of like sadness, but a moment of endless possibility. Endless. That's the album to me. Yeah. The album to me is, um, we hear a lot of heartbreak albums and we hear a lot of in love albums. Mm -mm. It's rare that you get an album that so perfectly sums up what it is to reach the end of that mm -hmm. climb mm -hmm. where everything opens up again and you realize that all that stuff is over the hill behind you. Yeah. And it's just wide open. Yeah. And I had a lot of friends have that conversation with me when I was going through my breakup, you know, like, Oh, but you know, you're going to be okay. And there's so many people out there and like, oh, we, what, just blah, blah, blah. we just want to say the right thing. You I know. know and, and it's hard to hear it at the time. And yeah. it, you know, you kind of it feels disingenuous, it. right? Cause you don't believe it. Exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then I lived it and it was this journey that took way longer than, than I thought it was going to way longer than it probably should have. Um, but I lived it and, and it just felt so mind blowing to me that, that they were right. <laughs> And so in a way, so I almost good. want the album to serve as like me having that conversation with it everyone else as does. a friend being like, girl, I promise you. It does, dude. I, you know, it, it, as soon as you hear it, you're like, oh shit, it's going to be fine, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be just fine. Don't worry about it. You know what I mean? Totally. It's so sick, man. I and love it. And that's track one on the album, which I wanted, you know, it was yeah, like, yeah. we have to just go and fucking slap them across the face and be like, wake up. Oh, and it's so authentically dirt, dirty and dingy and windowless and dark with one single like white strobe light yeah. and 40 and like 150 people. Yeah. That's the club that you want to go to. Totally. Kids don't know about that life anymore. They don't really right. know about those clubs anymore, right? Those clubs like they existed back in the day and they still yeah. exist in certain parts of the world. You got to hunt them down though. Mm -hmm. Those places where you walk in, you're like, I don't even know where I'm going. This corridor is so dark. And then mm. all of a sudden the, the rumble uh, reveals itself to full sound system and it's just a white light. Yeah. No, I think that's something about like Berlin party culture that's so That's what rushes to me. To me. It sounds it's, like that. Well, yeah, we went and made the video there because of that exact reason. And, you know, like the idea that there's no phones allowed. It's like, it's not about any of that no, bullshit. it's a bunker. It's like, go and release yourself. You Lose know what I mean? Your like shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love it. What did you learn about yourself through the latest experience of of, of finding and losing someone you care about? Um, coming through the other side with an incredible album, if we can just park the music for a second and speak about the internal conversation, what did you take from that experience that's going to make you stronger and better, do you think, in the future? I mean, so much. So, so, so much. It was a rough ride, you know, with a lot of um, ups and downs for sure. And it's been a really long ride. And I think that... You said something interesting. Sorry to cut you off, but you said longer than it probably should have. And when you said that, I immediately thought that the person who left you unlocked other things that probably aren't even directly related to that person. It just, it brought up other stuff. I think so. And, I, you know, I think just also like, 
I, I don't know, untangling yourself from from someone. It felt like this big ball of just like knotted wool or something like that. And um, it just took a really, really, really long time to to kind of like slowly but surely. And and it's still something that I think I think about a lot. I think it's something that I'll carry with me for the rest of my life. That relationship, you know, like I I'm really grateful for it and I'm really grateful for everything now, you know, like the good and the not so good. And, um, I am really proud of him and really proud of myself. And like, you know, I, I think only really in the last like couple of months, honestly, have I felt truly, truly, truly like on the other side of it, you know? And, and that was something that was important to me to reflect in the music as well was like, it's not this like you know, I, idyllic situation where like one day you wake up and you're like, oh my God, I'm single and everything's fucking amazing. It's like a journey, you know, and, and, um, you'll have these random moments where you snap back and, and whatever. And there's a song on the album called still got it. I was like, going to talk about that. That's the one that sc screams to me about that. Yeah. It's like one of my favorite songs in the album. And it's basically just about seeing that person and being like, oh my God, damn, you still have Every single thing that made me fall in love with you in the first place, it's all still there. And and on top of it, now you've got all of this history and all of this these jokes and whatever. And like one of the hardest things in the world through the breakup was m feeling like I had to stop myself from from connecting with this person that I just adore. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And so Self preservation, eh? Totally. And now only I th maybe that's why I've been feeling so much better, like over the last couple of months, is because only really truly having felt like I've done all of the work now, can I allow some of that relationship to, to come back into my life? It. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. It's like a big sense of relief. Oh, what a relief. I mean, I've, I mean, look, if you go through a significant heartache in your life and you do the work and they do the work and it works out the way it's working out for you, you will have that experience where it's like, okay, because it does, you're right. When you get over the hurt and the pain and the anger and the frustration, the resentment, then a certain sense of kind of fear kicks in that I'm not going to have that, ex that, that person in my life. Mm -hmm. And to your point, it's way more than just that era of romantic interaction and connection. It is the jokes. Yeah. It is the thing that they can say to you. No one else can ever fill that gap. Totally. It's, it's so sad when you lose that in your life. Well, that's the thing. I, I got to the point where I was like, it is so much more painful for me to pretend that this person is dead than it is to like allow them in in a capacity that feels scary because you're letting them back in at all yeah but i would much rather feel that fear yeah and have some sort of yeah like acknowledgement that it even happened you know what i mean there was a period where i was like oh no i i have to completely like block that out and pretend like it never happened and and, and pretend like it didn't exist and that was like, that was the, when I was my saddest, I think, you know? Yeah. I mean, apart from... Because like he didn't die. No, you know I mean? but, but, <laughs> but he, but he kind of did. Right. In a way. For a period. For a period. Mm. You know, it's one of the first things you learn when you have your heart broken is when your friends just be like, you are not friends for a while. Yeah. And more often than not, the person who's doing the breaking is desperate to do the repairing. Mm. It just needs to go through the process. Mm -hmm. It has to. And if you're lucky, if you trust it and you take the risk, you take the shot and you have faith, yeah. you come through and you get to have equal say over how the repair happens. And that is the true joy of, of redefining that relationship, man. Completely. Congratulations. That's a beautiful thing. Thank you. And you've got an incredible album out of it. I know. That's a sleigh. Like, I'm like, so okay, thank you for that. That's at least one thing. Like, let me make some money off of this. You know I mean? <laughs> Have you played the album for this person? Um, I've, I've, been, I've been sending him stuff, like, periodically or yeah, whatever. Yeah, if it concerns yeah. him, yeah. you know, like... Is that a courtesy move? As, as for much sure. As, yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I never want to, like, um, I don't know, pull the rug out from someone's feet and... Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I kind of always do that. Like if something is very explicitly about someone that that I think maybe people will figure out that it's about them, I'm like, hey, just so you know, this is something that I've written. I haven't ever had someone say like, don't put that out. And I don't know what I would do in that situation. Well, that means you're a great writer. Okay, nice. Thanks. Um, I mean, it's true. You know, I mean, laziness is a, you know, a, a specific sort of um, detail about somebody in a situation that you don't like is a form of lazy writing at times mm. i think it's like mm -hmm. it's either it's either vindictiveness or it's lazy either way you're in trouble <laughs> you and know? that was the thing was like i really you know like on still got it for example that was one of the moments where i am like it sounds so corny but where i really really believe in like the magic 
of songwriting because like I don't feel like like I've never written a song in that that process before I just wrote this sort of like paragraph in my phone and then made it work you know like melody and timing wise and everything afterwards and made it rhyme or whatever and and also I really love coming into a song without a concrete understanding of the way that I feel about the situation. Yes. Yeah, like I'm not making a, I'm not making a decision. I'm not even trying to make a statement because I don't know yet. You know, I'm just like, let me just, let me just get this out. And, and it's such a, it's such a nice feeling when it happens, you it's know? magic. Yeah, it really is. It is magic. And yeah. I was talking to Alexis French about this just before, um, about the intangible nature of that relationship between art and artist. Um, that space that we're all trying to better understand, monetize, control, market, distribute, release, mm -hmm. it just it inherently rejects all of those terms. Right. Because you're absorbing all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, dude, I'll, I'll give you a quick personal example, right? Because this is a conversation, not an interview. Um, so, so you know, I'm going through a thing with my with my mum right now, which is requiring me to grieve to some degree while she's alive, and I'm so mad. I will feel like the grief is coming up long before I'm willing to acknowledge it. Mm. And I used to re just resist that for like weeks until eventually I had to walk up the road and just like let it all out, right? Mm. Now I'm like, oh, I know what this feeling is. Mm. I know where it's coming from. Now, if I was a writer, I'm searching for ways to translate that before I even really acknowledge it. It's like totally. it's so, the space is so minute. Totally. It's wild, man. Yeah. No, and, and you sometimes you surprise yourself and you're like, oh, I didn't know that that's what I felt. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, totally. um, and it, it's really nice to be able to like talk to yourself in that way. You know what I mean? And just kind of like ruminate on things. And, you know, I used to write a journal when I was a kid um, and I haven't done it in years. And it's, it's the same feeling of just letting your mind go and it's not for anyone else it's just for you you don't have to know what you think you don't have to know what you're feeling you just kind of go and by the end if you've done it right or if you've like you know really let yourself go you end up with something that feels like the experience or feels like how you feel you know yeah, and it's yeah. like it's got all of the nuance and all of you know like for example in still got it or can't go back baby which are really like the two sort of like sad ballad songs on the album um I have so many emotions. I, I'm angry. I'm sad. I'm heartbroken. I feel deep care. I feel adoration. I feel love. I'm like, it's all there. And trying to come into it with like a concept or something <laughs> yeah, of like yeah, totally. with a bunch of pop writers in the room, like yeah. uh, there's no way. No, there's um, no way. Because it, it just would have been a version of yourself that isn't authentic. I mean, totally. at the end of the day, to your point, we are having conversations with ourselves all the time. Self-awareness is something that is a consistent lifelong yeah. journey. You're trying to refine it at all times. Yeah. And I do think the arts, and I do think whether it's canvas work or sculpturing, or sculpturing, you know, or uh, sculpting, I should say, or, or writing or or journaling, noveling, whatever it is, is a form of expression, you know, I, I, I think to your point, it is the closest you can get to having a conversation with yourself and uncovering the things that if left alone mm -hmm. could fester and be dangerous. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know, it's a beautiful thing. And I mean, people always say this all the time, but like, I guess another version of it is like therapy, but, but I find it even more, um, like personal because with therapy, I really only have my words yeah. and then therapy is like personal training. Right. Yeah. And then in music, <laughs> the you've mind, got like, you know? you've got melody, yeah. you've got production, yeah. you've got like sound effects, you've got vocal production, you've got your vocal. Dude, sometimes I listen to Radiohead records. I listen to Tom York, right? As a good example of this. And there's many examples of this. And I listen to something he's saying, which really to me isn't actually anything that's particularly deep, but the way he's singing it and the way the music is relating to it, mm -hmm. I'm in pieces. Yeah. No, and that's the thing about, like, I can't really think of another you know art is is the only way that i can think of how to communicate a full feeling you know you can tell someone how you feel and you can you know show them how you feel but like to actually pass the feeling to somebody else music is such a rich way to be able to do that because you've got there's so many layers to it you know what i mean and and so many you know opportunities to to kind of like 
really, really create that emotion again for it's people. It's the perfect trade between self-serving and a gift for others. Yeah, it's exactly. The perfect trade. Yeah. It's like, I love you for this music. Well, I love me for this music. Yeah, <laughs> totally, <laughs> totally. <laughs> you know, um, man, life is so good for you, not just within the music, and we're going to come back to the album, but let's just take a beat for a second and um, talk about some of the other things you've been, that you've been focused on, um, deciding to, to take what inspires you and turn it into something that is tangible, mm. smell, yeah. touch, yeah. feeling, right? Mm -hmm. Things that feel good on the skin. Yeah. How has that building this this up and, and and announcing this and getting ready to be in this business what has been the most rewarding part of that well so i started a, a lifestyle brand called sulang yo which means to long years in yiddish mm, um, I love that. it's the language that my grandma spoke and it's like the sort of this language that's been in my family and was it a phrase that kicked around when you were a kid yeah so i mean we like i grew up not really knowing what was a yiddish phrase what was a hebrew phrase what was an afrikaans phrase like it's just kind of like family words is the way that i thought about it you know um but yeah it was it was always just kind of in the house yeah and um it's something you know smell has been something i've cared about so much my entire life and and home i think that my love for home, like I was that kid that would call his mom and be like, mom, can you come pick me up from the sleepover at 2 a.m.? I was just like obsessed with my family. I was obsessed with my house. I didn't ever want to leave. I think the first time I ever like successfully slept out, this is so embarrassing, was when I was 17 when I went to go see EMI about signing my record deal. Um, <laughs> and it was my first time going by myself. Crazy. You know? That's not embarrassing at all. I think it's I think it's really sweet. And by the way, we you know we, we we think that like rejection of the family, yeah, it's an important part of identity creation. But dude, it's like fucking that's that's your safe space. It's totally. where the people who know you best are. Exactly right. Um, I think it got exacerbated then when I when I started traveling. Um, I was loving traveling, but I always have had this like anyone who knows me knows that I have this deep deep longing to be with my family and be in Australia and and have a place that I can call my own and I can express myself through and um and then I sort of created that in my house in Melbourne and um and I just want to share what I think a home feels like you know it smells like food cooking in the kitchen plus then one of our beautiful candles burning and and so um yeah I, I also then was really particular about like how was I going to do this this is the most personal thing in the world how do I make this what I actually want and um a vagina candle Right, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> there was all these kind of like Respect. companies that were approaching, and yeah. and um, it just didn't feel like genuine to me. It didn't feel like the way that I wanted to do it, and so um, yeah, because what they're doing, in my opinion, is they're is with the best of intentions, prioritizing what you mean to it versus what it is. Totally right, completely. And then my brother approached me, Perfect. and he was like, "I, I want to do this with you Perfect. if you if you still want to do it." And I was like, "Are you kidding me? Yeah, let's." Let's fucking go. So we literally have been running it as if like completely, none of the music has ever happened. <laughs> imagine, imagine that. Yeah. Um, we, we run it out of like my house and, and, um, my parents have been like helping with little things, you know, like helping us pack boxes and stuff like that. It's like, it really, really, really feels exactly how I want it to feel. And, and, you know, getting to express myself in this, in this way and, you know, be the creative director role has been so satisfying and, um, yeah, it's just been like a completely new experience. It's been so fun. I'm so happy for you. Look, it's, I think when you become someone to somebody doing something, it's easy for others to feel like you should do everything. Mm -hmm. I think you have to be really careful and selective how you do that. Um, that's why I'm, I'm the biggest fans of the people that always do things like Tyler. He'll do tons of things, but he always comes back to music. Yeah always comes back to that room in the corridor of his entire world. Totally. And the music room is full. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And I think this is one of those things that like I see people branch out and do things all the time. I'm like, mm, chicken, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But like with you, it just makes total sense. A, because I've seen the AD piece on your house and like congratulations on having exceptional taste. Thank you. <laughs> like, Thank you. And I know that's a weird thing to say. It's almost a Zoolander level comment, <laughs> but it genuinely is like congratulations on having great fucking taste. No, joy, thank you that, so that, much. That, 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 that house is sick. Thank you. It just makes sense. Yeah. It just makes sense. And you, must, thing, you must I, say no to things all the time. Like, I know I do. And I said no to this because I was like, that doesn't feel right yet. You know, like if we're going to do this, it has to be made in Australia. Like all of these things that are so important to me, um, it has to feel like that. And, and I didn't know, I didn't think it was possible to recreate that in like, you know, some... In Melbourne. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and so 
it sort of reminds me of like the rush video or something where i was like yeah we could fake it like we could make that in la or whatever and and it could be it could be you know we could try and make it look like this but why don't we just go get the real thing it's also, it's also better business it's much it's much cheaper to do a more authentic video and it's much cheaper to make it about your family and about where you live and yeah. to do it from home and to make it real and make it you people will then really invest in it because they're like you well yeah also i think it's just like it's not the easy route that's the that's the, the hard thing i think is like you know going to berlin or to bangkok to make these music videos it's like I attribute these videos to the team of people that I've been working on on them. You know, like I think about this one example of the main sort of dancer in the Rush video. The Mora. one that joins you first? Yeah. yeah. Mora. He's so incredible. And he's just finished university and he was like looking for a job when we made the Rush video um, doing like commerce or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And then I see him in Bangkok for the Got Me Started video and we're all on this crazy journey together. And he's like, by the way, I'm full time dancing now, like from, from the Rush video. And I almost started crying because I'm like, damn, this whole team of people, they all gave so much for me to be able to slap my name on it at the end. But these, like, this is, this is a team of people who will go to the ends of the earth to make the best thing that we can possibly make. Which is why they're now doing awesome shit on their own terms. Yeah. It's been like such a joy. I've had as much fun making the visuals as I have making the album. And that was something that was like a rule. I was like, whatever we do, it has to be fun. Well, it has to have connection too, from the album artwork to the subject matter of the music, yeah. to the sense that you are finding freedom and reconnection with people that make you feel good about yourself, mm -hmm. to the videos and everything else. It's just really about connection. Yeah, exactly. It totally is. And and I felt like completely intoxicated the entire time. Not literally. I mean, sometimes literally, but like, <laughs> but I was just, I was having the best time. Like I did some really annoying shit i'm sure for my label like i went to barcelona to make the album booklet that's in the deluxe version because i was working with a design team over there that i love called querida and i was in barcelona for like three days working with them on, on building the, and like riding my bike to their design studio every day and like going out at night and just like it's been a joy a total joy from day one. Well, I applaud you. You know, I think I think we all try and find ways to cut costs because we think it's going to help in the long in the long run. It's actually a short term win and a long term loss. And also, the weird thing is, it's often cheaper. I travel very. I don't have like an entourage or anything like that. Like I am by myself in Barcelona, going Beautiful. on my bike to. Beautiful. I, I kind of realized what I wanted, which was you know i'm okay to go by myself but i want to be in these beautiful places being inspired by beautiful people and and i was kind of like living really cheaply and whatever and i just wanted to do it so i did it none of this feels like a job it used to to be honest at yeah. the beginning i would just it would be a laundry list of people i talked about music and it felt very promotional now like we don't do this unless it's like oh i can't wait to get into all of it yeah yeah um but that being said you know despite the fact that i can i can admire what it what, this, the environment anybody's in through their art and where they are in their life. I got to say, Troy, you figured this out. Like y you've come through this tough time. And I think I see, like, I, I keep using this word free. There's a freedom to the way that you're working and moving and combining it all. Mm. It's not like home is here and work is here. Mm. It's like, nah, I can, I can make it all one thing. Yeah. That's the goal. I, I got to say, like, I think, it's interesting now to be promoting this music because um, that has been true and it's still true. But I also realize now I'm, I'm about to enter a new phase. I should probably start writing again because I'm like, okay, freedom can be lonely as well, you know? And it's like, I think there's still this sort of deep desire to, um, to settle somewhere with someone you know and so now i'm kind of like entering that phase but this this album is like it's already kind of serving as this time capsule of this like completely fulfilled erratic freedom it's a beautiful placeholder for what is still <laughs> the ultimate yeah. goal but then it's interesting because i kind of saw this coming and the last song on the album how to stay with you yeah i love that song it ends really open-ended and and it's very very clear that like um you know, the, the final lyric is starting again when I got all I wanted, starting to feel a little bit despondent <laughs> and it kind of just fades <laughs> out. And so you've had this big journey of this crazy album of like partying and whatever and meeting all these people and stuff like that. And then you're still kind of on your own at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that yeah. can be beautiful, but it can also be kind of lonely sometimes. Well, what it will probably do, hopefully, not to try to get too deep about it, but it will probably enable you to, to be better prepared for the next relationship you have because right. it won't be so all or nothing. 
Yeah. You know who you are. Totally. That's the thing. That is one thing. As as nice as it would be to find whatever I'm looking for, I know that I don't need it. Like, you know, it, they would have to be really fucking funny and cool and hang with my fr- be able to hang with my friends and be, you know, as inspiring to me as the people in my life are. You know, you've got this beautiful body of work, the start to finish album, which in a way could be, you could play this album start to finish. It feels conceptual almost to me. Mm. Well, yeah, when we were writing it, I, at the very beginning, I saw Janet Jackson at the bowl and I, that show changed my life. Um, and I was just like, I had a moment where I was like, oh my God, this is where everyone learned everything. Yeah. Like she is the blueprint, literally. Um, as far as pop stars go, she's it to me. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, her and Jam and Lewis just got together and, and they just pushed her and she pushed herself for the truth. And the songs sound still fresh, like so fresh. It's crazy. And the drums are so fucking the drums, loud. Yeah, yeah. Those Jam and Lewis drums are like, it's so hot. It's like, oh and the, shit. And the visuals on top of it were just like. I don't know, everything about her to me and the choreo, like she's just, she's everything. Um, but I saw that show and I love the Hollywood Bowl um, so much. And I saw, you know, Tame Impala there yeah. and they're from Perth. I don't know, that venue is so inspiring to me. And and so Leland, my co-writer, who's like also my best friend, anytime Oscar Gores or whoever we were working with would start playing like a chord that felt right or a drum pattern that felt right, we would look at each other and be like, Hollywood Bowl, Hollywood Bowl. And obviously it's like this far-fetched dream. I'm not Stop saying that. Stop with that. No, I've heard, but it, I've read you said that recently before. No, but like, I'm not, I'm not, that's not even necessarily the goal. You know what I mean? Like that would be really, really cool, but it's not, you that's not what I'm saying. You can do that. I know, hold that thought, but let me just get in your head for a second. You can fucking sell out the bowl, bro. I don't care. Like, I don't know. Yes, you do. <laughs> you do care deeply. <laughs> Maybe I do. I um, you totally do. One day, one day. <laughs> Whatever. I'll see, Anyways. I'll see you next year. I only live around the corner. So, um, you know, that was, we, we essentially did write the album as like a live show. You know, when, when I think about the show, um, or when I think about the album and moments that it's missing, I would be like, oh, well, you know, the show needs this. And so we, we, you know, we've been talking for years about like wanting to write a musical or something together. And, um, and I think that this sort of in moments kind of felt like that where we were like, okay. What is, what is the show Shit. need? Dude, 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 dude. It's so crazy, right? It's so crazy. Because the way the bowl, sta- the, the bowl stage is set up, it, it kind of throws a lot of people off. If people are watching this or listening to this, just look it up while you're listening or watching it. So you'll see the whole image of it. It throws people off because it feels like a bandstand. It feels like an orchestral environment, right? right? But I've seen the right people do it, go in there and they turn it into their environment. They use it as an infrastructure. To me, that's a nightclub. You could yeah. totally create an environment. Exactly. Because the thing about the bowl that's so beautiful is it's as inclusive as you want us to feel. Mm-hmm. But it also feels beautifully theatrical and vicarious. Completely. So there'll be times when, you know, you can turn that into a club and just witnessing that experience will have that theatrical, uh, 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 like, feeling that you want to get. Completely. I saw um, Robin and Royskop. Royskop. Royskop, yeah, Royskop. I mean, they turned that into a nightclub. Into a nightclub. It was sick. Dude, when I saw Robin at the Palladium, one of the best shows, top five shows in my entire life, which is rare to say. I think I supported her there. (laughs) Were you at that show? Did you? I think so. Oh, wait, no. Was it the Forum? No, it was the forum. Okay, cool. It was the forum. Yeah, I was going to be like, oh, sorry. <laughs> but to be honest with you, I was going with somebody who was way more like uh, dedicated to time than I am. And so I had to wait <laughs> for them to arrive. But uh, that show was fucking amazing. And I mean, you saw it. It takes her seven minutes to walk on stage. Yeah. You are in a state of euphoria before you even see her. <laughs> totally. Totally. I mean, you could like get your favorite DJ just come out there and get that place fucking going. Yeah. It's just like all of a sudden it's like, let's just fucking go, man. Let's no, just go. You know that I'm going to tease this instrument. Like I'm going to go with this intro for like at least 10 minutes. Oh, 10 minutes. Before because we start seeing. And then you just like. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. A little bit of fucking like underworld rares and then 100%. back into this and just ride it. And then by the time you come out there, bro, and the dancers come out, it's just fucking over. Yeah. It's gonna be the it's gonna be the bowl show of the year next year. Hope so. We'll see. Book that shit. I don't know. Talk to my manager. You talk to your manager. It's your job. <laughs> yeah, but I can't be like I don't know. Anyway, it's whatever. We'll see, we'll see. You got this, man. You got this. So where do you go from here then? I mean, you've made this beautiful album. Life is wide open. You've got this lifestyle that is that works for you. You miss home, 
but it's there waiting for you. Mm-hmm. So are you going into this trying to live in the moment? Are you now in super schedule mode? Are people booking shit up for you? How do you feel about that? Like what's the what's the next sort of six to 12 months feel like given that you've kind of made this yeah. in your own space, in your own time? Yeah, so into album mode, into Sulang, your launch, now back into album. It's been a big year and um, I basically am super, 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 super busy until the album comes out. How do you feel about that? I feel great about that. Cool. It's fun. And then I... My brother is having the first like grandchild in my family on like a, towards the end of the month. And so I'm going home for like four months. Uncle T. Yeah. I'm just going to go chill. Beautiful. And like see a baby. It's going to be awesome. And then 2024, you just, because by the way, here's the thing. Everyone, this whole idea when we, we used to rush out on the road, we put records out, I get it. But it actually really doesn't make sense because people are excited about the album, but they don't know the album as much. I think quarantine changed it a bit. The artists that put their music out and then came out and played those shows 6, 12, 18 months later often said to me they were the, some of the best shows they ever did. Totally. Yeah. I mean, well, by the time I finally played this live, like my last show was in 2019. It's been a long time since I played a show. Have you been I'm making money? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like Just selling my talk. body. Just real in talk. Melbourne. Like um, shit. Melbourne ain't cheap, bro. Yeah. That's an expensive city. No, it fully is. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I'm just like, I, I'm itching to, to do it. God, especially with this record. Shit. Yeah. It just sounds really fun. It sounds really, really fun. I think like the 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 music and and then the the audience those are just like the um uh, the things that are pulling me to do it like i'm like you know cuz the the sort of lifestyle of traveling and everything like that yeah, that a sounds a little stressful to me but then i remember like the rush intro yeah. with people and i'm like oh damn i should probably i should probably do that as soon as possible <laughs> like i feel like it's going to be sick <laughs> so yeah I just, I don't even want to know that you're on that stage right. until like the first chorus because you're in the middle of the dance floor. I don't totally. even know where oh you God. are. It's just, really I don't even crazy. know where to look. There's like 50 people. I'm just having a fucking incredible yeah. time. And then you just emerge out in front and it's just like, fuck, man. Damn. Do you want to come on and just like creative direct the show? Yes. Okay. Dope. You heard it here. He's going to do it for free? Yes. I, you know I haven't toured in 2019, so I don't have much budget. So I've got to, you've got to just do it for free. Fucking Melbourne, man. Mates, <laughs> mates Melbourne's rate. taking all your budget. Yeah. <laughs> fucking milk and bread and coffee out there is a $100 experience. Yep. Um, you're going to have the fucking greatest time. I'm so happy to I'm see excited. you, man. And I'm, I'm so glad that we're... Shit, I think I said this word for word last time I spoke to you. I'm so glad we're still here to have these conversations. Yeah. I, I love your energy. I love how you honor your art and your voice and your music and you find a way to, to go to new places. And, you know, I've always thought this, but I, I'm glad that, you know, you continually outdo yourself. You know, you, you really are a special artist, Troy. Thank you so much. You're like my favorite person to talk to. So thank you. Love you, man. Thanks for coming in.